Hey guys, what is going on? Dylan here. Another day, another dungeon. Today we're going to be dealing with the Grasp of Avarice Solo Flawless. I will say, out of all the dungeons, this one is the, probably the easiest um, that I've found. Uh, this one I solo flawless to like after my third or fourth attempt. Now the ogre does have some tricks to it. Um, the sparrow part does have some tricks, and we'll go over that. Uh, but first things first, our loadout. So first we're going to be doing uh, the Fate Bringer, Cartesian Coordinate, and Sleeper Simulant. And then for our armor, make sure you have that Protective Light with Particle Decon, and then Luna Boots for that DPS. Um, if you're worried about staying alive, you could always do something like the Stag or Karnstein Grips. And then we're going to be running Well of Radiance. Um, so like the other uh, dungeon, I'm going to be doing more of like a walkthrough as well as like the things that I did to stay alive since you're going to be trying the Solo Flawless. Um, but for this first encounter, you're going to be killing these hive enemies that are going to be dropping these engrams, and then they will give you a buff, or debuff rather, called bur uh, Burden by Riches. And once you get um, 50 of those for this first encounter, it'll open up the next section. Um, a cool thing with this is if you get 10 engrams, uh, it'll give you your super and all your abilities back. And now if you have 10 and you also get 20, it also works. Anytime you get a multiple of 10, it'll give you everything back. And then what you do is you go inside the cave, you just stand next to the crystal, and it'll take that burden or that buff from you. And um, after 50, you can move on to the next section. And so here, uh, make sure you get the shrieker that's like in the middle. He will shred you. So just make sure you get that shrieker and then keep moving along. Now you can kill all these enemies if you want. Um, I think I do take a shot at a knight here coming up in a second, but then I decide to screw it and I just run past it. Um, if you're more cautious and want to play it slow, just kill all the enemies. There's not a big, you know, there's nothing against doing that, it's just a little bit slower. Um, so what I do is I play for my life here, so I just I die, I pop that grenade to give my health back, and I just run by everybody. So if you're worried about something like that, then just play it slow, it's not, you know. Um, and so then, um, and again, I do apologize because I am going to be kind of moving quick. This is already like a 17 minute video, just because this dungeon is very long. So um, I have the entire video sped up, so I'm trying to cover a lot in a short amount of time. Um, and if you guys are having trouble with this, oh, I should cover right here. So for this room, make sure you go to the right on the table here. There's a pressure plate right in front of you. So just do that and then go back over the table to get through. And then I'll open up here and then um, don't go to the very end and flip that switch. You'll also die. Just let this kind of sink you down and then jump across. And then from here, you can go back here and then go back over. Um, so yeah, so if you guys have any questions or if you're really having trouble with this, put it in the comments and I can either... Uh, I can either invite you to a game and we can kind of go through it together and I can help you get a better understanding of it or I can help walk you through it or if you just have questions put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer anything that you guys do ask. Um, make sure you just follow this path because there are pressure plates like literally everywhere. Um, and then this part you're going to be opening these doors and hopping from basically from open door to open door. You're going to be making your way down towards the end. And again, watching for pressure plates, just kill all the enemies. It's a limited number of thrall, but every time you leave and come back to one of these rooms, new thrall will spawn, so keep that in mind. Um, and watch out for the cursed thrall, that one almost killed me. And so you're going to be just making your way down. Um, so yeah, so... Um, a lot of this dungeon is picking up those engrams and getting that uh, burden by riches encounter that happens in almost every encounter. Actually, I think it does happen in every encounter, except for the sparrow part. Um, and so what you're basically doing is, because you have that well, you want to be very liberal with that well. Just constantly placing the well, because once you get the 10 um, burden, you'll just get it right back, right? So... Um, and I'll show you what I mean in the Ogre Encounter. When I first did this, the Ogre Encounter was one of the main things I was having difficulty with. Uh, but as long as you know exactly what to do or how to do it, it, it becomes very trivial. So as we make our way through, opening each hatch, uh, right here, just kill the Shrieker that spawns. He will always spawn right here. Uh, wait for him to open and then hit him in his eye. Um, you're okay with wasting heavy here because there are rally banners before each um, encounter. I don't think Shattered Throne does that, and I don't know why they haven't fixed that yet. So that'll be a heck of a time doing that um, when I get to that that solo flawless run. And so then what you do is you want to make your way back to the other side now. And again, because I went in here again, they're going to respawn. And so see how I'm just kind of sitting back, I'm playing it slow, letting, you know, letting my fate bring you do the work. Oh, and also, if you guys want me to do this again, but without exotics, without pinnacle weapons, without... 
um, certain things. Like, if you want me to do it with just base stuff, let me know and I can run it again. I don't know where everybody is in terms of the loot that they have. So I'm more than willing to do it again without, like, a time loss fate bringer. I could do it with, you know, an auto rifle if you want or something um, to, you know, guide that way as well. Um, but this is the main point of this is just to show how I did it when I first did it. Um, so uh, this next part, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to get a Scorch Cannon. So again, just clearing out all the enemies, taking it slow. See, I'm taking one jump at a time. And here I do almost die. They actually, like, they hit me with that grenade and they were just lighting me up. So I popped my well, like, on top of them. Um, just being very protective, making sure that I don't die unnecessarily. Um, oh, also there are secret chests in this uh, dungeon that I will be getting. I think there's secret chests in the majority of them, but I, I know where these are. <laughs> um, so, there's one in this room, which is the reason why I bring that up. And so after that, just make sure you kill those wizards. Hop down to the other side. And kill all the enemies in here. And so, again, I do apologize if I am moving kind of quick. Just back up the video, rewatch it, do whatever you need to do. If you have additional questions that I didn't cover, feel free to leave in the comments below. And then, well, after you do that, then the door here will open with the Scorch Cannon. And after I get the Scorch Cannon, I'm going to go get the Secret Chest, so... I'll show you where that's at real quick. Which is all the way over here. And there it is up there. Uh, and so what I do for the encounters is I show you the entirety of the beginning. That way you can see how it works and the mechanics and everything. And then I cut to, well, the ending. Because after that, it's just kind of a rinse and repeat. Um, if you want a completely uncut version of this dungeon, uh, let me know in the comments because that, that'll be like an hour long video. Because it's just such a long dungeon, and I'll, I'll more than gladly up, upload the uh, the raw version of this, or just rerun it again, or whatever I have to do. Um, and so yeah, so after all that, about over, just under halfway through the video, we're at the first encounter. <laughs> and so yeah, so there's your rally banner. And the cool thing too is the scorch cannon. If you notice, I still have it with me. You can actually bring the scorch cannon from that last part to this encounter, which will help reduce some time, you don't have to kill that Vandal. Um, and then I also like to prioritize this right side because there's this little tunnel here. Just be careful to watch for Thrall that run up on you. And then so you want to shoot that in there and you want to charge that up to the third tier. And then once you do that, it'll open. And uh, throw your well down because as soon as you get 10 Ingrams, you're going to get that well back. So just, again, be very liberal with, with your wells. And then standing in it, make sure you take down those Knights. I think I'm at, I'm at 8 right now. And then, see, and there goes that well. Uh, where my super, I get that back. Pick back up the Scorch Cannon. So, uh, these crystals, you need 25 Ingrams. Right now I have 14, that means I only need 11 more. Uh, each side should yield you about 13, roughly 13. So, and after that we just move to the left side and we're going to open this side now. Um, so yeah, so each side should yield you by 13, so that means that each you should do each side once, and that'll uh, enable a uh, damage phase. And so again, I do the same thing. I run in here, and I immediately throw my well down as soon as I get to somewhere I can kill all the enemies at. Just for staying alive. Um, and then as soon as I pick up, again, uh, 10, get my super back again. And so then... Um, so you, so there are Thrall that do spawn and they will run up on you. So every time I go to this crystal over here, I, I try to throw a Rift down just to keep my health going. And then I throw a grenade next to me um, to kill those Thrall. And then I like to do my DPS over here because he can stomp and I feel like he'll stomp me off. I don't know if that's true or not. That's why I don't do DPS near the crystal like some people do. So I like to do it over here. Um, and you'll see in a second I do the final DPS phase and you see him charge me and he actually does stomp me. So, and then... Switch out, and you're just doing as much damage as you can. See, I do about probably well over a third of damage. And so here you go, doing the last damage phase, popping that well down. And so you'll see the ogre, he actually gets pissed here. And he charges me. And this got really scary, actually, because he stopped, and I popped up out of my well, which was pretty scary. So I feel like if you did that near the crystal, he would stomp me off the map, and that would be it. But So yeah, just keep doing damage. I did, I killed him in three phases. You should easily be able to three-phase this guy, two-phase him. Just... Be careful. And then the same thing with this one. This is the uh, Sparrow part. If you follow my path exactly, you'll be able to get those my, those uh, Fuse Extenders and also hit everything. So this is a normal path I take. And make sure you use your dodging left to right because that will keep you alive. 
Now if you are having trouble with this part, you can put on an armor mod that allows you to take more arc damage. Um, you can also put on Risk Runner, which uh, will allow you to absorb some, some arc damage as well. So if you are having trouble with this part, that's something you can do. And also make sure if, if your Sparrow starts to light on fires, get off of it and get to a new one. It's an instantaneous switch. And so then, after that, oh, and this last part, the, if you're boosting through this, um, at least every time I did it, it sent me like over the extender, so I hop out, so that way I can grab that extender, and then I jump down. So, or just don't boost, I guess, either one, but just make sure that you get that extender as well, and then I'm showing you how to get to the final secret chest, which is up here in the skulls, I think, I. And the RNG loves me because I got gauntlets again. I'm trying to look for a really good IS Luna roll, but no luck. Okay, so the second to last encounter is the Servitor. And when I first did this dungeon, it was like the coolest encounter. Now I now I hate it. Because you come from such like a exciting, like, oh, the Sparrow part's so cool, to this very slow-paced encounter. Either way, so we're dealing with the Fallen Shield. And there's going to be a servitor. I saw it back there in the corner. It's got a shield around it. That means that's where you need to go. So you're going to shoot yourself across like I am now to get to said servitor. You can actually turn these cannons, which is what I'm currently doing. I'm trying to get all the way back there. So you just want to try to look and see where that servitor is. I get very lucky with these servitor spawns. And so I'm just trying to get over to the right. So once you're over there... What you want to do is you're going to kill enemies, and you're going to collect more engrams that they drop. You're going to get that burden by riches. To drop the servitor's shield, you'll need 20 engrams. Um, and then you'll kill the servitor. And make sure you do kill the Scorch Cannon guy. He does a lot of damage. So every time you get to a new area, just kill him. Don't pick up his Scorch Cannon, because then he won't respawn if you do drop it. Um, so after you get 20, run over here, and that shield will drop. And you go ahead and kill him. And then when you're pushing that, you know, the, there's some spare uh, engrams on the ground. Um, I just collect them, and then I go put them back in the crystal. Make sure you debuff every single time. That way you don't randomly die. And then once you push the servitor down next to the cannon, you'll get your Scorch Cannon. And then you want to make sure it's aimed at those plates that are on that whatever that is in the middle. And you want to shoot it, and it'll hit that and explode. And so then I noticed that the servitor was right next to me, so we're moving along. And I think I do a jump cut here to the last one. And so yeah, so you just rinse and repeat that four times. Uh, make sure you get 20 engrams per, and then um, you want to shoot the servitor up, and I watch it go, and consume, and that is the shield down, and that is that encounter. That one's really simple, it's just it just takes a while. Um, and also don't drop your Scorch Cannon like I just did, because now I can't get up. See, I walk over here and I go, oh crap. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then so I go over here and kill this guy. And we got the final encounter left, which the final encounter is really not that bad either. Um, the only issue with the final encounter is there's these two yellow bars that are really, really annoying. Um, and if you're not careful, you can get overwhelmed with dregs. So you cannot take the Scorch Cannon to this final encounter, by the way. It'll make you drop it. Uh, so as we move along to the final encounter. So I did try to do something kind of cheeky here to see if you could do it. You cannot do it very effective by yourself, at least not with my build. I would not recommend trying it. So, to start the encounter, there's an Engram there, and then these two yellow bars will spawn here, and I was trying to hurry up and get rid of that shank, but I was starting to die, so I decided never mind. Um, so, always play for the enemies on your area. I always go over to the same right side over here, and I always just make sure this is clear before I do anything else. And so, in the order, I would make sure you get rid of the shank first. So that's why I'm using sleep around the shank to make sure that... Because he can snipe you and he does a pretty good amount of damage. So if you happen to be like one shot by the dregs that are on your plate or something and that shank gets a lucky shot, he'll kill you. And so, as soon as you notice dregs spawn with you, make sure you clear them out. And also, uh, as soon as that Scorch Cannon guy's on you, he does a good, good deal of damage. So make sure you take care of him as well. Don't, I wouldn't pick up the Scorch Cannon right away unless you're going to use it, because if you pick it up and drop it and it despawns, then another Scorch Cannon guy will spawn. If you don't pick it up, it'll sit there forever. Um, so a cool thing is you can actually use the Scorch Cannon on the yellow bar, and if you hold it down, it'll do 45,000 damage, which is a pretty good chunk. And so after you kill the, the yellow bar, not the Shank, the other one, the Vandal or whatever it is, he'll drop 10 Engrams, and you want to throw those in the middle there. Um, and so... Uh, 
this one to go to the boss DPS phase is uh, 60 Ingrams. And every time you shoot one of these little pillars, or whatever you want to call that, um, 10 will drop on each side, and so you should be quick enough to get 20 per. So here I grab 5, I grab 10, and immediately run down to the middle part to grab another 10. Um, Engrams will drop on the left, right, and island, or the middle, and so you just run over there and you deposit. And once you've deposited 60, you'll go to damage phase. And I think I do a cut here in a minute to damage phase. Yeah, here we go. And so damage phase, so you pop your well down, get that sleeper out, and just like the ogre, start shooting for the face. And then, so after that, those yellow bars will respawn, so you will have to kill the yellow bars again. And then you grab your 60, you dunk it again, and um, you just rinse and repeat this. Um, there is no limit to the amount of phases that you can do, so don't, you know, don't worry about that. Um, there's no timing, so when you get back to the side, just make sure you take out care of the drag. So here's my final damage phase. Um, for some reason, he teleported that way, which is really annoying. Uh, but normally, he teleports in the back middle like that. And so, after you've done enough damage... You kill him. And so that's Solo Flawless. That is how to do the Grasp of Avarice Solo Flawless. So if you guys have any questions, I know I moved kind of quick. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys think of this video. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I stream Apex. I stream some single player games and Destiny 2, especially with Witch Queen coming up. And uh, yeah, please sub, hit the notifications when to, you know so you know when I go live or a new video comes out. And uh, yeah, all right, later, guys. Love you.